a user signup form here. And let's say I would like to experiment with alternative designs for this page and then track how many sign up for each variation. This is commonly known as A-B testing and it's a great way to determine which design is most effective for your application. Now there are many different ways to do A-B testing. Here I'm going to use the split gem by Andrew Nesbitt, but I'll mention some alternatives at the end of this episode. Now the split gem uses a Redis backend to store the experiment results, so we'll need to install that. And the way the gem works is it provides this nice A-B test method to create an experiment and provide a random variation. And then it has a finished method which you can call to mark a successful conversion. And it even provides a pretty web interface for displaying the results. Well, let's get started in adding it to our application. First, if you haven't already, you'll need to install Redis. If you're on a Mac, I recommend doing this through Homebrew with brew install Redis. And once that's done, it will give you some instructions on launching it. You could just launch it manually with this command. And then going into the gem file of my application, I'm just going to add the split gem to the bottom here, and then you'll need to run the bundle command to install it. And now, time for the fun part. We need to add variations to the signup form design. I'm just going to start off with something simple, and that is changing this signup text at the top here. So here's what that template looks like with the signup text, and we can use the AB test method that Split provides to generate variations. The first argument you pass into here is the name you want to give to the experiment, so let's call it signup title. And then you can pass in as many variations as you want. So let's say uh, sign up as the first one, and sign up for free as the second one, and uh, sign up in seconds as the third variation. So now Split will choose a random variation and return that for each different user that comes to the site. And you can see when I reload the page, there's the alternative title. But no matter how many times I reload the page again though, it's just going to stay with that variation because it assigns it to this user's session. And that's generally the behavior you want so the user doesn't see inconsistent design. So now we just need to track when the user submits this form. Now that form gets submitted to the user's controller create action here. And when the user saves successfully, then we want to track that. We can tell Split to do this by calling finished and then passing in the name of the experiment, which is sign up title. So now if I fill out the sign up form and then submit it, Split will track that for me. And then if I go back to that sign up page, you can see that the sign up title is now different. And that's because when an experiment is finished, it's going to automatically reset it for that user. So the next time they visit that experiment page, they might get a different variation. Now, if you don't like this behavior, you can change this in the finished call in the controller. Just pass in the reset option and set it to false. This way the experiment will persist after it's finished. So the user will see the same variation. After we've gathered enough data with our AB test, it's time to check out the results. We can do so using the web interface that's included, is built using Sinatra, but we can mount it directly into our Rails application by adding this into our routes. Now we'll also need to require the split dashboard to use it. So going to my gem file, I'll tell it to require the split dashboard. And then inside of my routes, I'll just paste in that line to mount the split dashboard at the split path, but you can really choose whatever path you want it to mount under. And then visiting that URL will bring up the split dashboard, a really nice representation here of the results. You can see the sign up title experiment has three variations, sign up, sign up for free, and sign up in seconds. And you can see the results here. One sign up for free was completed and the normal sign up text was not finished. And what's really cool is you can perform several actions here, such as resetting the data, or if there's a specific variation you're convinced that is the best, you can choose to use that, and then it will always show that to the user. And you can see that by going to the signup form again, and it will always show us that title now. Really cool. Now, let's say we want to change more than just the title of this page. Maybe there are other parts of this design that we want to experiment with as well. So one thing you could do is go back into your template and add some more A-B test calls to perform some more experiments throughout this page. But generally that's not a very good practice because if you have too many experiments going on at once, then it can, can become difficult to determine the results because they can interfere with one another. 
In fact, it looks like the next release of this gem will make it so there's only one experiment active per user at a time. So it's best to just stick with one experiment at a time, but how do we do that if we want to change multiple parts of the page? Well, this AB test method can actually accept a block. And so the variation that's chosen will be passed into the block. So let's call that style. So let me clean this up a little bit here in that block. And then these test arguments could be made a little bit more generic. So we could just call this test sign up. And then for each of these values, uh, let's just make a general overall feel of what the different designs will be. So let's have a long design and a short design. And how about one that's called bold? And then we can change up the view for each one. So we could say sign up here. And let's only say for free if the style is bold, like that. And we might only show this paragraph of text if the uh, style is long. So it'll be hidden for every other style. And then let's say for the uh, short style, um, let's hide the password confirmation field uh, by checking if the style is short here. So that way that field won't show up for that style. Now you'll likely want to make some of the CSS code dependent on the given style as well. So for that we can just add a div here and just toss the uh, class in there containing the style that's passed in here. And then down at the bottom of the page, I'll just end that div here. And then I want to add some CSS styling for this. So I'll do that under the asset style sheets users file. And I'll just paste in some CSS code to change up the design slightly for each of the variations. I'm doing horizontal uh, fields for the short form and changing the action sign up button for the bold version. Now let's try reloading this page and see how it looks. And it's showing us the bold version right here. Uh, there's no text at the top and we have the different styled action button. Now one thing I haven't shown you yet is that in development mode, you can manually specify which variation you want to look at by passing it as a parameter in the URL. So we could say uh, for the sign up uh, experiment, we could say we want to look at the, uh, let's do the long variation here. So that's what the long variation looks like. It's the basically the original. And let's try the short variation. That's a very short variation for the sign up form. So that's pretty cool. It's a different way to look at the different variations. Now Split has a variety of configuration options which you can specify as shown in the docs here. Those options can be set inside of an initializer file. I'll just call it uh, splitconfig.rb. And I'll just paste in the code here from the docs. Um, the uh, robot regular expression you can specify here, but I think the default is pretty good for that. And you can also tell it to ignore certain IP addresses. Uh, the database failover is really awesome because if for some reason it can't communicate with Redis, you don't want that taking down your whole application. It'll just default to the first experiment option if that's down. So you can tell it to log the uh, down error there. And as for allow multiple experiments, this option actually isn't available in this version. It will be available in the next version because uh, this feature isn't added yet. Another thing you may want to do in your configuration file is password protect the dashboard. So you could do that with these few lines. So I'll just paste that in here. And you can, of course, change the username and password to whatever you want. So now when attempting to visit the split dashboard, I get this authentication area where I have to type in the proper username and password that I specified in the config to access it. Oh, by the way, you will need to restart your Rails application when changing that initializer file for it to take effect. Now I haven't covered everything here, so be sure to check out the documentation for further details. For example, it's possible to weigh certain experiment variations so that they show up more frequently. Also, if you check out the extensions, there are a couple of other projects listed here for exporting the data and also sending it to Google Analytics. Really cool. Speaking of Google, an alternative solution for A-B testing is Google's website optimizer. It has many features, including A-B split testing here. Another neat solution for A-B testing is Optimizely. Uh, check out the demo video there because it is really quite impressive and a unique way to do A-B testing. And for a Rails-specific solution, there's A-Bingo, which I covered in episode 214. It's an older gem, but still worth looking at. And there's also Vanity that you might want to check out if you're looking for an alternative to Split. All right, that wraps up this episode on using Split to do A-B testing. So if you're wanting to experiment with various designs and want to see which one is most effective in your application, give it a try.